So you went whole food plant-based and you willingly said goodbye to pepperoni pizza forever. Or did you? channel plant-based storm for those that are coming back welcome and those that are new here welcome as well my name is stormy and I'm so excited to show you how I make a whole food plant-based pizza but it's not just any pizza it is a Hawaiian style pepperoni pizza that's right a whole food plant-based pizza with pepperoni before we get into that recipe I'm so excited to show you don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notifications when I upload new content. It really helps me out and it will always help you out to know whenever I upload new delicious recipes just like this one. This pizza is so full of flavor. It will be quickly become one of your mainstays in your uh, meal rotation. I know it's one of ours so I can't wait to get into all this deliciousness. Oh, and you'll want to stick around to the end because I have something really special that I'm going to finish this pizza off with and you're not going to want to miss it. Also, let me know what your favorite pizza is um, because like I said, this is one of our favorite pizzas. Um, we make this all the time. Just, this one comes together really quickly. So let's go ahead and get to it. The first thing that we're going to do is talk about you can either do this crust um, and knead it by hand or you can use a stand mixer i'm going to use a stand mixer okay so we're getting ready to make the crust so the first thing that we're going to do is add our yeast to some hot water you're going to use two and a half teaspoons of yeast and one cup of fairly hot water and also a tablespoon of date syrup um, you can use whatever kind of sugar that you want to. This is just to keep it whole food plant-based. You could also use maple syrup if you'd like, but either way, um, it's to help the yeast to get going and get active. that you kill the yeast but you just want it nice and warm not like scalding hot where you couldn't stand to have your hand in it and then you're just gonna whisk all of this together and mix the sugar the date syrup up in there really well and then we're gonna set that aside and let the yeast activate for five minutes and I'm just gonna cover it. Um, I've got here two sets of paper towels and in between I have slices of tomatoes. Now these are like your smaller cherry tomatoes, maybe a little bit bigger than a cherry tomato. They're about this round. And I've got these sliced up. You really, you could use any size tomato that you want to, but that's just what these are here. And I had them in between two paper towels. I don't know if you can see how much moisture has actually been pressed out of these, but I had, there goes the preheat. I had another set of paper towels laying across and I had it weighted down with two iron weights to help press all the moisture out of it. Ah. But this right here is where the magic happens and where we're gonna get our pepperoni from. I had posted another video the other day and one of my subscribers had told me about this pepperoni spice blend. This was something that Chef AJ worked with and put together with this company and it tastes just like pepperoni and it smells exactly like pepperoni spices. So whenever she told me about that, I was so excited. I ordered it immediately and said that I was gonna try it. And the day that this came in, we tried it and it was so delicious and it made it taste just like a pepperoni pizza. 
And I contacted Local Spicery, that's the name of the company that makes this seasoning, and asked them if there was anything that they could do for my subscribers if you wanted to order some of this. And they said that if you mention me, Stormy, or Plant Based Storm in the checkout, then they will end up sending you two small sample packs of SOS free seasoning because y'all, they have an incredible selection of SOS free seasoning on their website. Um, but they'll send you two small um, packages of SOS seasoning for you to try at no extra cost to you. So that's pretty cool. I'll make sure to put this in the description box below, but let's go ahead and get this on our tomatoes. So if you don't like tomatoes, you can use other things. You might want to use like, I don't know, mushrooms or some other vegetable like that, that you can coat pretty well with this seasoning. Um, and if that doesn't seem like an option for you either, you can just simply sprinkle this on your pizza after you add the pizza sauce to the dough. And I do make sure that I get both sides. So I'm gonna spread these out and put them in the oven and let this bake down and into it pretty good. It'll help concentrate the flavors a little bit more so that it really pops whenever you take a bite of it on your pizza. Okay, and as you can see, they really kind of crisp up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those out and we'll add those to the pizza. There's just one minute left and I'm waiting for the yeast to activate. After the yeast is nice and active and bubbly, this is what you want it to look like. We're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the ingredients. So, We need two and three cups of flour. Now this, this recipe is going to make two crusts. So you can either freeze it for another time or make two different pizzas or make two of the same pizzas, whatever it is that you wanna do. Okay, so there's two cups. I'm just gonna add that right in. And then another three quarters of a cup So there's three quarters of a cup, and then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast for flavor. And then just add that right into the stand mixer. Doing this by hand, you're just gonna combine all of the ingredients and then knead it for five minutes. Also, I like to add in some basil. Now this is some basil that we grew ourselves and dehydrated. If you ever have the opportunity to do that, I highly recommend it because it is so much more fragrant and flavorful than what you buy in the store. And it's a really great way to use up produce in your garden. Put your dough hook on and let this knead for five minutes. Okay, so while the dough is um, kneading in the machine, I'm going to go ahead and get the sauce ready. So I like to use strained tomatoes. It's a little bit thicker than pasta sauce and it, it will work just fine for spaghetti, I mean, blah, for pizza sauce because uh, we really try to watch the sodium and there's only like five milligrams of sodium in this strained tomato sauce. So it really helps us control what we're doing. So I'm just gonna add, ah, I'm just gonna add this into this mixing cup. And I do all of this just to taste. So a little bit of sauce. This was already open, so I'm using what we had. One thing that I like to add is, of course, Italian seasonings. And this is the Rebel Roots, which is our absolute favorite. And it's got Mediterranean oregano, basil, organic rosemary, majorum, and rubbed sage. And it's super delicious. So I'm gonna add this to our sauce. And like I said, just do this to taste. I really like all of the herby flavors, so I'm gonna put a good bit in there. And then I'm gonna add some of our delicious basil that we made. And then a little garlic powder and onion powder. and black pepper. 
And you can do, you can leave this plain. You can do this with whatever seasonings you love. It's your pizza, so make it your own. That's the fun thing about pizza, is that it can be as diverse as we all are here on this planet. And you have a very low sodium um, homemade pizza sauce. And once the dough has come together, this is what it looks like. Um, and you're gonna split it, kind of roll it into a ball here. It's nice and elastic-y and airy. And split it in half. Because like I said, this makes two pizzas, or I guess you could do one giant pizza if you wanted to. I'm definitely no expert pizza maker. I like to roll mine. You're just gonna put it on a lightly floured surface. I'm gonna do this like in a rectangled shape because I'm gonna put it on my Silpat mat because I don't have a really good non-stick pan. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't stick to what I cook it on. So either use a really good non-stick pan or do like what I'm doing with the Silpat mat. If you have a good non-stick pizza pan, then you can roll this out round. Just do it however uh, you need to, to suit the um, things that you have in your kitchen and it'll turn out just fine. Once you get it rolled out, next is time for the toppings, the fun. So this crust is ready for a little bit of sauce. I don't like a heavy, heavy sauce, so I didn't make a whole, whole lot. Also, you can see that I just kind of rolled the edges of the dough up just to kind of help create a little bit of a crust. So that it gives you a little something to hold on to. Now this is a rustic pizza, obviously. Like I said, I'm no pizza pro but I sure do know that it tastes really delicious when you take the time to make a homemade pizza. Now for the toppings, I already had these pre-cut. I've got mushrooms, jalapenos, pineapple, and then this is our tomatoes that we cooked earlier with the pepperoni seasoning and then purple onion. You can, if you would like to have a little bit of extra pepperoni flavor, just sprinkle um, some of the seasoning lightly over this, but I think this is gonna be enough for me. So let's go ahead and get the toppings on here. Okay, now this is just gonna cook, and you can do this for eight to 10 minutes. The longer that you cook it, the crispier the crust is gonna get. So let's get it in the oven. So while the pizza's in the oven, I'd like to make a side of broccoli to eat with it, like for a 50-50 plate, and some cheese sauce to drizzle on the top, but that's not what I'm putting on as the finishing touch. So you wanna continue to watch until the end, and I show you what goes on the pizza at the very end, and it brings it to the next level. So I've got my broccoli here in the steamer. And I put that right on top of my other pot. And in this pot, I have two medium-sized Yukon Gold potatoes, two carrots, and a half of a sweet onion. I'm gonna bring this to a boil, and while this is boiling, it's gonna steam the broccoli, and then we'll get the cheese sauce put together. Just put it right in the blender. I'm gonna put in about three quarters of a cup of the liquid. And if you need more to get the texture and consistency that you need, then that's totally fine. I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, a spoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a good pinch of salt. I don't always add salt, but today I'm gonna to be the only one eating this, so I'm gonna add a little bit. And you're just gonna blend it up. take the cheese sauce and pour it in here and then let this drizzle right on top of the pizza for the magic I've got some of the Texas Hill Country Olive Company's pineapple balsamic and y'all this just takes it to the next level I'm gonna drizzle just a little bit over the top of the pizza So 
so good. I didn't put it on the whole pizza because I don't want it to get all mushy if I don't eat all of it, so I can put it up. But how delicious does this pizza look? So yummy. This pizza has it all. It, it's got a delicious crust. It's whole food plant-based. It's a bursting with flavor, pepperoni. I mean, you really can't go wrong. And just so you know that none of these products are sponsored, but I'm gonna link everything that I use in the description box below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like this. I always try to put the recipe in the description box below as well. I'll see you in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching.